Um, one of the hot topics today is um, the um, COVID-19 pandemic. So um, I was looking at some um, ways I could take another look at this. with um, infoepidemiological data is a quick snapshot of rapidly developing event. It is low or no cost in many cases. And um, you can use it for exploratory investigation to develop research questions for a more expensive time and money epidemiological studies. I um, came, I see this as one of the things that, um, say a graduate student that's doing his thesis or a dissertation and wants something where they'll be able to get an idea of what, what topics, what research questions would be good um, to investigate where they could get some interesting results. I, um, a few years ago, I um, did my PhD dissertation, and um, one of the um, considerations was how can I develop a study where I'm likely to get something kind of interesting? Well, with um, epidemiological data, such as looking at Google Trends, you can get an idea of very cutting edge research where um, a study might prove fruitful and might give some interesting results. So unlike the previous studies where um, they're looking at more of the results, I'm going to be looking at how you um, can ask questions um, via the, um, the uh, info-epidemiological data. In um, March um, 2020, news articles um, were saying that um, the elderly and individuals with um, various conditions should stay at home, avoid crowded areas. Of course, this um, caused complications in daily living, such as, Here's um, an example of um, the Google Trends shelter in place where it became a hot topic. Normally, Americans um, go grocery shopping um, a little over one time a week. However, grocery stores can be crowded and the um, individuals who are older, who may have um, other conditions, might be afraid of um, catching the COVID um, virus. One of the um, things that um, Google Trends has shown is that at the time of um, the pandemic, in early March, um, there was a spike in um, um, searching for um, information on Amazon Fresh, which is a grocery um, delivery service. And another thing you'll notice when I was searching for that to see, you know, I speculated that this would be something interesting. Um, there was another spike earlier in um, late um, 2019. And it turned out it was um, uh, Amazon had revamped its system to make um, Amazon Fresh part of Amazon Prime so you didn't have to pay an extra fee. So there's news articles, I did a search, and there's new news articles corresponding to that spike. And then, um, of course, this spike in early March um, corresponding to COVID-19. Another um, way that some elders can get food if they want to stay at home and not go grocery shopping is Meals on Wheels. Meals on Wheels is a service 
um, which provides a hot meals such as um, stew to um, housebound elders. And um, I saw on their website um, just recently that there's a 47% um, percent, um, more meals served. But if you look at the um, Google Trends, you also see the spike in March or uh, mid-March for um, information on Meals and Wheels. If um, the COVID spikes again, it might be interesting to look in real time as far as the spikes in different um, states and whether that affects the Meals on Wheels. So that might be something um, someone might want to look at. Physical activity. If you look at um, PubMed, you see that um, there's a lot of interest in exercising and aging, those search terms. And there's also a lot of recommendations. We realize now that um, doing some um, exercise is good for healthy aging. However, gyms are um, potential um, areas where um, the COVID um, virus might spread. And as you can see, the terms gym and, gym and corona spiked in mid-March. So what are they going to do? Well, take a look at various ways you can exercise at home, such as exercise videos or exercise bands. Again, um, searches for those terms spiked in mid-March. Handling stress during the pandemic. As a previous speaker um, um, talked about, there is an increased interest in telehealth. Um, from Google Trends, you can see an increase in telehealth psychology. You can also see an increase in interest in the topic of prayer. And um, if you look at PubMed, there, um, you might guess that there's um, an association handling stress through prayer. And social, socializing. Um, PubMed shows that um, the terms elderly, social isolation, and depression. There's interest in that. And you can see from Google Trends that there is an increased interest in FaceTime for virtual visits. Take a look at gardening. Gardening could be a source of um, fresh produce or physical activity or stress release. And you can see from um, searches uh, uh, from information PubMed indexed publications that you can look at um, gardening in terms of food security or diet, trying to eat a healthier diet. Either one of them might be applicable to um, the COVID pandemic, either someone um, who wants more food security to grow food at home or um, someone who's trying to eat healthier to hopefully ward off getting the virus. And also as a form of physical activity at home and also um, gardening as stress relief. So if you're trying to develop a um, hypothesis, if you wanna do a study and you're doing some exploratory research to try to develop a hypothesis, um, what, you might, what might you um, look at with um, Google Trends? Look at vegetable seeds and flower seeds. You see the seasonal increases in both 
vegetable seeds and flower seeds in search terms. This year, during April, you see a larger spike in um, searches both for vegetable seeds and flower seeds. What might you ask if you are using this for exploratory um, studies in order to develop hypotheses for a um, public health um, study? Flower seeds, you can think, okay, you know, that could be stress relief. Vegetable seeds, you could think it could be stress relief, but it also might be um, food security. It might be trying to eat healthier. So um, those are some things you could investigate, but using exploratory research, um, looking using um, Google Trends, you can see that there's increased interest in seeds. So that might be something interesting to look at as far as gardening. Looking at fruit trees versus flowering trees. You see seasonal spikes in both. Um, however, um, during this year, during the April of this year, you see a much more significant spike in um, fruit trees. So you might, if you're trying to develop a hypothesis, you're using this as exploratory research to try to develop a hypothesis because you're looking for something where you might get some interesting results. Um, you might be wondering, fruit trees, they wouldn't be something where you'd get um, immediate fruit. It might take a few years for the fruit tree to start producing fruit. Why would the um, COVID pandemic cause people to say, hmm, maybe in a few years, it'd be good to have some fruit trees. So that might be an area where you might want to explore more. But you can use um, Google Trends as exploratory research you know, very fast, um, real time, um, no cost to try to find something where it, you might get some interesting results with further studies that take more time and might also, you know, cost more money. Oops. So in summary, Infodemiological data um, using, for example, Google Trends can give you a quick snapshot in real time. Something major happens and you want some information fast. It can give you a snapshot. It might not answer all the questions that you could get in a survey, but it's a fast, inexpensive way to figure out what would be good questions that might produce some interesting results for you um, to do studies that would involve more time and more money. And this could be especially useful um, for graduate students who want to do something, but they want some interesting results so that they have something interesting to write on their thesis or on their dissertation rather than, you know, something that's a null result. So um, that's um, what I have for today. I welcome some more questions. And I would like to um, thank everyone um, for listening. And I'd like to thank um, the organizers um, for this opportunity.